Ahoy folks, Gadgetoid here. I've been catching up with Minecraft Redstone recently to see what's possible. And after some trial and error and a couple of visions, I've built an 8-bit adder out of 8 full bit adders. So a 4-bit adder adds 2 bits, either a 1 or a 0, which with a lever can be represented by on or off. On for 1, off for 0. 2 bits will be 2 levers. On 1, 0, 0. So a bit adder adds two bits uh, together and produces a sum, which will then be either one or zero. And it also has a carry out. And the carry output is because when you add two bits together, one and one, you can't put more than one out because you're talking bits. So two bits, one and one. Your signal can only ever be on or off. So to add two bits together, we have a carry output. And the carry output goes up to the next bit adder. Okay, so let's look at how a full bit adder is actually constructed. I'll lay it out here because it's rather difficult to see inside. First and foremost, we need our signals, which are our A inputs and B inputs. We toggle them on and off, and they'll give you a 1 or a 0. 1 or a 0. We need to take those, and we need to boost them with a repeater, generally. Not always, though. Depends on your use case, but in this case, we're going to need to boost them with a repeater and wire them into that shape. There, we're going to take two comparators from side by side, take the output, and then boost the output. And using a repeater actually converts the signal that might come out of a comparator or that might have traveled away with a lever into a full signal again. And you need a full signal to make this work properly. We're going to take our wire around the side. That's uh, got the redstone lamp there, so you can see the output. So if we put one on, then our exclusive OR gate will output one. If we put two in, then our exclusive OR gate will turn off because it's got two inputs. It can no longer provide an output, and therefore the output is one. Very basic principle. This is how you add two bits together. If you add one and zero then your output will be 1. If you add 0 and 0, your output will be 0. If you add 0 and 1, your output will be 1. And if you add 1 and 1, then your output needs to carry up to another stage. So let's go and have a look at version 1 inside this big building here. Now, I had trouble with this. It just became a little bit too big. I couldn't get it to work properly. The pistons kept sticking out because it was too big and they wouldn't reset properly and I have to go up and smash some redstone and tinker about and get them to reset. Um, I think there's way too many repeaters in here as well so it made the circuit quite slow and it's now full of bats so I've got bats in the belfry. It's not doing so well. So you can see the circuit's quite complex or it looks it at least but it's the same basic principle. Here we have two signals coming in. Come around here, and then we've got our first gate, which is a logic gate. It says A, exclusive or B. So when you turn on either of the signals going to this gate, it will turn on the output. But when you turn on both of the signals going to this gate, it will turn off the output because it's an exclusive or. So it could be A or B, but it can't be A and B. So in a full bit adder, there are two exclusive ors. The other one is actually over here. So this is a second exclusive OR gate. Uh, this thing over here, which is a slightly confusing mess, is actually an AND gate, and it works by inverting the signals going in so that if A and B is on, then the redstone in the middle will be off, and then amplifying that output, that OFF output, and inverting it again so that when it's OFF, the output is on, and when it's on, the output's OFF. So I don't need to worry too much about this layout because it's really confusing. So yeah, this is the old version. As you can see, it's quite big, quite complicated, quite messy. Obviously, some experimentation and evolution have gone on here. To actually show you how it works, I'm going to go and find my new version. So in an 8-bit number, each bit is the power of 2. So that's 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and 128. And no two of those bits, or even any combination of those bits, or those numbers, can be added together to create the value of any others. So you can't add 8 and 1 to create 16, it just doesn't work. You can't add 1, 2, 4 and 8 to create 16, you get 15 instead. So computers exploit this mechanism 
to actually add numbers together and, and understand and remember numbers because they deal with every bit as a power of two. So stage one is here is a one bit and then a two bit and then a four bit and then an eight bit and then a sixteen bit and a thirty-two bit and sixty-four bit and the hundred and twenty-eight bit. So right at the very, 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 very top. I've actually brought the carry out, but there's no bit at a stage at this point, but this is a carry out. And this is the 256 bit. So if I added all of these bits together, they would come up to 255. So the final bit at the top is 256. So if I add one to 255, so we've got 255 dialed in here. One plus two plus four plus eight plus 16 plus 32 plus 64 plus 128. Add one. Then we get this miraculous ripple effect where we get 256 with the output. So let's turn everything off and have a look at how it works. Okay, let's start with one. So that's our one bit, and these are our one switches. That's the A number and that's the B number. So we're adding number A to number B. And each number has got eight bits of input data. So this is one, so we're adding number one. And adding number one to zero, because there are no switches here, equals one. So we've got bit one on our output. If we add one to one, then we get a carry up, and bit one turns off, and bit two turns off. Because the first stage, not knowing what to do with these bits, can't add them together, so it turns this output off and pass it up to the next stage, which is a two stage. The two stage doesn't have any comprehension that it's a two stage, but it's adding that carry input to the next bit. It gives us our result of two. So if we add two to two, so we've got a carry input coming in. If we turn on one of these levers, then it's going to be unable to add those numbers. It'll pass it on to the next stage. And the same with the next stage. So this is very much what happened when I turned that lever down there on and added one to the 255. So one of the things I did when building this version is to try and lay out the circuitry a little bit more explicitly and a little bit clearer. So I learned about this new way of bridging signals across other signals, which doesn't invert them. The previous way I used inverted them, and so I didn't invert the inputs to the AND gates in a different way. So here we've got our A and our B signals coming in, so I'm not floating around. Right, we've got an A and a B signals coming in. So the A signal comes in, and goes into the exclusive OR gate here, and it also goes into this AND gate here, which we'll talk about later. The B signal also comes in and goes into this exclusive OR gate. So if either A or B is on, then the output of the exclusive OR, this first exclusive OR gate, will be on. That feeds into an AND gate, which ANDs with the carry input. So if either A or B is on, then this will turn on. Or if either A or B is on and the carry input is on, then this AND gate will turn on. And it also feeds into the second exclusive OR gate. So the second exclusive OR gate is checking the carry input, which is coming up from the previous stage here. And it wants to tell if A and B exclusive OR is passed, and we've got either A or B being passed in, it checks that against the carry input and makes sure that before it outputs the result, the carry doesn't need to be added. And if the carry needs to be added, it needs to send it up to the next level, which is what happens with this AND gate here, and also this one here. So I've got an A and B signal, and I said earlier they came to this AND gate here. So if A and B is set, then the output of this AND gate will turn on, and that feeds into the carry output and up to the next stage and out there. So if you try and add two bits together at this stage, it turns this stage on and sends them up to the next stage because it can't deal with them. If you try and add one or the other bit, then the exclusive OR will pass it through. And if you're not carrying something up, then the second exclusive OR will pass it through. So it will wrap around and go to that output you can see down there and go out via the piston. So let's actually try turning these levers at this stage on and see what happens. So we'll start with just our A, so I'll turn that on. As you can see our signal is lit up, and you can see our A signal feeding into the AND gate. The AND gate is going to stay off because there's only one signal going into it. So A 
and b or one and zero is only ever going to equal zero and again it's outputting a slight signal but it's not enough of a signal for it to actually propagate up um, our exclusive OR gate is passed through, so the signal will pass through to the second exclusive OR gate and also to this AND gate over here because there's only one of the signals that are on. Our A signal is on, but our B signal is not. So if we go and follow that out, you can see that it's turned the piston on. Now if we go and add another one to that, we're going to get something that this adder can't deal with, so it's going to have to send it up to the next stage. So turn it on, and as you can see, it's sent it up to the next stage. Now you'll see that the exclusive OR gates, because they've got two ones, no longer output a signal. The AND gate down here is turned on, and you can see there's a much longer signal coming up there, because A and B are set, therefore it has to pass them up to the carry output and into the next stage. So we'll go down here and turn one of these off. We're actually looking at the 128 bit here, so each of these equal 128. I turn one of them off and make 128 by adding 64 and 64. It's going to overflow the next stage anyway. And you can see this is because the carry bit, which is this wire coming up from underneath here, is um, not only stopping this second exclusive OR from outputting its signal, but this carry is also being anded with the first exclusive OR and outputting a signal which gets propagated up. So let's go down and have a look inside. Interesting. I'll show you this first. I stuck a little piston up here for a laugh. When you get an overflow, this computer literally overflows. So water pouring out the side. And an overflow is what happens when you get to the very, very top of your adder and you're trying to add another bit and it can't do it. So it's passing it out of the carry output. But if you're only representing an 8-bit number, you haven't got a ninth bit. So it overflows out of the adder. So here we are inside the computer at this stage we were just looking at through the glass now we can walk around and see hopefully where the carry input is coming up so we'll go down to the previous stage you can see that carry signal is coming up from beneath so this AND gate here that's getting the two signals in has turned the center stage off which turns the output stage on it goes up and up and up and turns off this exclusive OR, which is the add the sum output, because carry in sums with the one bit from the stage can't produce an output. And it's also gone into this AND gate and ANDed with the first exclusive OR, because we've only got one bit at this stage, that first exclusive OR outputs a value. And that's given us our value out, which is now going down here through this wire and then up. To the overflow up there. So that's basically how pit adders work. They're not very clever. Computers in general are terrible at maths. They're not actually doing sums, but they're faking it very, very quickly using digital logic circuitry that looks almost exactly like this, but it's obviously a lot, lot smaller. So inside a computer, when you add two numbers together, it's literally physically doing this and adding those two numbers together. Let's have one last look at the result. So if we take one, we get one. Take one, we get one. And if we add one and one, it overflows to the next stage and gives us two. So that's our bit that indicates two. Computers don't really get any more complex at the most fundamental level than this. It's just the same stuff repeated over and over and over and over and over again. Sorry if I made you dizzy just there. I'm a little bit twitchy on the cursor. Okay, bye folks, and I hope you learned at least something from this, or at least enjoyed the video nonetheless. Bye-bye.